What are a few common gifts for an 8 year old? I am 15 right now just to clarify that. Yes, you would be right to think about uh, board games or toys or stuff like that. Well, this 8 year old, when I was 8, because I am 15 right now, was gifted a telescope. I have been a space buff for all my life. I, I, in fact, I had become so passionate that I, that I even started my own so-called space agency, Joy Agrawal Space Agency, JASA that was supposed to rhyme with NASA. For the first few weeks, the telescope was a major attraction. All of my friends were crazy about it and even my grandma couldn't help but peek into it once or twice throughout the day. Almost six months passed and we all forgot about it. I mean, it became a white elephant. But there was a sudden need for that telescope six years later during this pandemic when the skies were clearer but more importantly because the fa quite frankly the telescope served as a very good background during a zoom call so we decided to take the telescope uh, for a road trip during these uh, past two years and while there we uh, did some stargazing and there were a few local kids around so I shared the magnificent views with them I was so surprised, astonished by the happiness they found in the small thing. And that's when I found my happiness in giving. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joy Agrawal and I am a teenager with passion for space technology, sustainable development and education. Before I move on with my talk, I would like to introduce myself briefly. I am 15 right now. I am a space enthusiast, space technology enthusiast, a STEM enthusiast, and I have filed four patents, all geared towards solving societal issues through technology and engineering. I have won many prizes organized by competition, competitions in competitions organized by IIT BHU, IIT um, Pawai, and VNIT Nagpur. I was also invited by IIT Madras as an exhibition partner. There I met a professor from the Old Dominion University who invited me to work at the Crucible of Research and Innovation in Bangalore. I have also founded two non-profit organizations, one for practical science education and the other for um, space technology for sustainable development. You know, I have always wondered, why was I named Joy? I don't know what was going on in my parents' mind that they decided to name me Joy and that to Joy Agrawal because I have been asked on numerous occasions the relation between the name Joy and the surname Agrawal. I have even been bullied for having the name Joy. So I did what any 12 year old would do. I looked it up on Google. From what I understand, Joy is more of a feeling, more of a phenomenon. And it has different perspectives for everybody. Everybody has their own take on what their joy is, what do they get their joy in. So I searched far within and outside myself to understand things that match my perspective of joy. And I found my joy in giving. I found my joy in bringing change for the society through education, space technology, for the humans, animals and the future generations to come. You know, now I'm glad that I was named Joy. Because I want to be that someone who brings joy to the world. You know, my two sweethearts when it comes to bringing change are education and space technology. Let's talk about my first sweetheart, education. What do you all think education without application is? It's a pen without ink. It's a bat without a ball. I mean, it's completely useless. So is science without practical science. Practical science truly helps us understand science better. In fact, during these past two years, I was required to prepare for a practical exam and um, I decided to order a kit online. While performing the experiments and, you know, um, preparing for my exam, a thought struck me that I can order a kit online and perform experiments, but can the millions of underprivileged students in India and abroad do so? Their education has been impacted in a greater magnitude than mine. And in fact, this is not only of these past two years. This has been going on since long before. In fact, a study in 2011 mentioned that about 75% schools in India still lack a decent practical laboratory. Which is truly concerning because I would like to give you all an example of how science can make understanding simpler. 
So, since we stay in India, you must have, you must know about this firecracker on Diwali. That's the um, black snake, black serpent, whatever it is. So it's basically tablets, black tablets, which you light on fire, and then you see long black snakes coming out of it. You know, you can do that at home in your own kitchen, and it's completely safe to do. All you need is sand, sugar, baking soda, and camphor. So what you want to do is take a plate and put some sand on it. Create a depression, a crater, small crater in the middle and add a mixture of sugar and baking soda. Then sprinkle some camphor on top of it and light it on fire. You will see that the black snakes start to emerge from the periphery. Now I would like to ask you all a question. Just reflect on why it starts from the periphery and not from the center as we would imagine it to be. And um, in fact, it wouldn't be as magnificent as that firecracker because here we are using camphor uh, opposed to the other chemicals used in the firecracker. So in 7th or 8th grade, we have studied this concept of um, a flame, diagram of a flame, where the outermost region of the flame is always the hottest and the innermost is coldest. Why is that so? Because the outermost has the highest, constant, highest access to oxygen and the innermost has the least. Similarly, in our setup here, it's a continuous flame, right? So the periphery has the highest access to oxygen, therefore higher temperature. And the middle part has lesser heat. Therefore, the um, reaction starts from the periphery and goes to the middle. See how relatable science becomes with these experiments from our daily lives, derived from our daily lives. And you can just visualize the whole thing and understand the concept of a flame with this one simple thing. To be very true, this whole obsession of mine with practical science education for all started as a school assignment. I was required to do social service for three months under the International Award for Young People. Uh, I decided to take classes on practical applications of science for underprivileged students in my community. On the very first day, in order to break the ice, I asked all of them what do they want to do in their future. And I was a bit depressed by the answer because most of them replied that they want to help their parents in their vocation. Four months passed and I was teaching the concept of Bernoulli's principle and how planes take off and through all this through an experiment. And one of them unmuted and shouted, I will also make a plane one day. And that's when I truly understood the potential of the impact of what I was doing. A child who might not even own a cycle probably is dreaming about making a plane one day. And I firmly believe if I can be that catalyst to bring change in someone's life, to help them dream something minute and then even give them the chance to work towards it, then I believe each one of you can as well. All you need is the will, the will to do something, the will to create change and the will to be that catalyst in someone's life. I see about 300 people seated in this room and if each one of us commits only one day of our entire year or one Sunday out of our 52 Sundays, then we will have almost a year worth of selfless skilled man days and that has the power to bring any kind of change. You see, individually, if we try to bring change or do something good for the society of our earth, then we are just a drop. But together, when we work, we are an ocean that can bring a tsunami of change. I would like to quote you all an example. So, my parents donate their blood on my birthday. I believe if every one of us or few of us pledge to donate our blood on our birthdays or in case of minors like me, parents pledge to donate blood, then imagine the countless lives that may be saved by this one selfless, simple activity that doesn't harm a healthy human being in any way. And imagine the satisfaction that you would get at the end of the day. I'll give you another example. So, I was reading an article that mentioned 12 million people in India are blind. And I thought, think, often think to myself that if only 1 or 2 percent people of all of in India pledge to donate their blood, uh, to donate their eyes after the lifetime is over, then India will majorly be a blind-free country. And you, many of you may think that this goal is very ambitious today. 
but so was eradication of polio but today we know that polio is a thing of the past and it has been completely eradicated so so can this as well be eradicated it's not a disease but in a majority of people blindness can also be eradicated through eye donation this is the power of micro changes small changes in one's lifestyle or uh, perspective will result in a drastic change when uh, done over a large number of people in fact this consciousness of helping one another has been there in our own culture which is the concept of vasudeva kutumbakam which means the world is one big family and if we all help one another we'll ultimately link the whole world in one network but today our world suffers through war violence poverty and inequality Let's move on to my next sweetheart that is space technology. So, who says joy of giving extends only to the society or the people? It even extends to our mother earth. And uh, fr frankly, we take a lot from earth, the resources and the stress, but we should give something to mother earth in return as well and that's sustainable development. Sustainable development is developing sustainably without hampering our um livelihoods lives or uh, put a stress on the resources or on the environment and space serves as a very important support system for sustainable development in fact in a few cases space directly supports sustainable uh, development our country's own isro indian space research organization has developed the potential fishing zone advisory a tool for fishermen to identify hotspots with high population of fishes in the ocean this helps our society in two ways it increases the fishermen's income again you might say that uh, this is not a very big step towards reducing poverty but again micro changes small changes for a small number of people but when many changes like this are implemented this will result in a drastic change and it also helps increase the total food available in our country but there is a but here um, overfishing can also be counterproductive it can hamper the marine ecosystem or uh, hamper the availability of fish for the future generations and things like that so space technology can help us with that as well by controlling illegal fishing because legal fishermen have to abide to certain limits whereas illegal fishermen don't so by controlling illegal fishing we can to a major extent control overfishing i believe it is every one of us duty to help develop earth sustainably and who says change needs to be drastic change needs to be small but consistent in fact start from your own backyard your own college campus school campus your own home or your own city and work your way from there i would like to share a three step strategy the three eyes of micro change first identify identify micro changes in your environment in your perspective or things so, so that it is earth is a better place to live for the animals the humans or the future generations then share it that is inform inform others on social media because we have this very powerful uh, weapon today which we can use to share our ideas with others and if you see that the response is truly good from everyone internationally then implement it on a wide scale so that we can make earth a better place to live together this was my perspective of joy i would urge each one of you to look deep within and outside yourself to understand what your perspective of joy is i would like to end with the final take away of my talk whatever your cause might be always strive to work for micro improvements on the strategy of the three i's in identify inform and implement thank you so much